Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. It's your boy Phil. So today, we will be eating omakase at the chemistry room in Times Square, New York. So, what are we waiting for? Let's start the video. Hope you're having a great day guys. So today we are in the chemistry room in Times Square, New York and we will be eating their omakase for this evening. Omakase from the Japanese language means I leave it up to you. The sushi chef will decide what's on the menu for that day and will depend on the availability of the fish and seafood that are in season. What's interesting is the menu changes every day so whatever choices or the course of the sushi that you will receive is a surprise. This chopsticks holder is a nice touch. And this is my first time seeing cube pickled ginger. But this one has a more sour and sweet flavor of the ginger. Which works better as a palate cleanser in between the sushi courses. First course is smoked miso soup. The base of the soup is made up of botan ebi or shrimp and konbu tofu or seaweed and tofu. The soup is very light with lots of flavor of umami because of the shrimp, the konbu tofu and the smoked miso. There is no strong shrimp taste, just smoked miso umami flavor. Next is Thai or sea reef with aged konbu sea salt meaning sea salt infused with the flavor of seaweed and lemon zest. The sea bream skin is toasted with a blowtorch to keep that skin crispy. And for sushi, there's a lot of prep work before they serve you your course. And that's the lemon zest and a little bit of salt and wasabi. The sea bream has a light and fresh taste. The skin, slightly toasted smoke flavor. There is a taste of umami because of the konbu sea salt, where the flavor of the seaweed has infused in the salt. Next course is king salmon, smoked with sakura leaf and crispy leaves. This piece of salmon is smoked to give it that smoked toasted salmon flavor. And this will contribute to the fatty flavor of the salmon. After they prepare the sushi, they season it with a little soy sauce and top it with sakura leaf. This piece was delicious and has pure umami. Not only is salmon very fatty, oily, and full of flavor, the smoke infused all of its flavor into the oils and in all of the fats of that salmon, giving it that very rich taste. The sakura leaf on top provides the sour tart taste to balance out the rich flavor of the salmon. This sushi was so rich that I had to take some ginger to cleanse out my palate. Chef, uh, how long have you been a sushi chef? 13, 14 years. Oh god. No oh, way. Oh my god. <laughs> Where did you study? Here? Here? Oh. Shima Aji or striped jack from Kagoshima with Tosazu vinegar. This piece has the same portion size as a sea bream and is seasoned with a little soy sauce. This piece has the same flavor profile as the sea bream, but has more umami and has more of that fatty fish flavor. Mm. The tozazu vinegar creates a perfect blend of smoky umami flavor and balances the acidity of the vinegar. Next is the akami or lean tuna, but this course has three pieces making it plus three pieces in your 15 course omakase. Akami or lean tuna has that 100% lean tuna flavor without the fat. I forgot what the sauce on top is, but I think it's made up of fermented tofu or fermented salmon roe, and that adds a strong umami flavor to that rich lean tuna taste. The sushi courses are well spaced apart. It's about three to five minutes in between courses. And in between these courses, these chefs are always doing something and preparing something for the next course or for the next customers. Next is chuturo or medium fatty tuna topped with quail egg infused with truffle oil. Along with the salmon, this piece is one of the richest and most delicious pieces. The fatty tuna has a taste of tuna butter. It basically just melts in your mouth. 
and the poached quail egg on top has that strong umami flavor because of the truffle oil that is infused into the egg. These are three amazing ingredients in one piece of sushi. <laughs> Next is otoro or very fatty tuna topped with caviar. Usually taken from the belly part, this is one of the richest pieces in this tuna course. And that's another umami filled ingredient, caviar. So this piece consists of a piece of very fatty tuna, seasoned with a little bit of soy sauce and topped with caviar and gold leaf. So what's better than medium fatty tuna? Very fatty tuna. These are two very delicious ingredients that are mixed into one sushi. The very fatty tuna is basically tuna butter. And all that oils, flavor, tuna fat just melts in your mouth. The gold leaf doesn't have any taste, but the caviar produces a different form of umami with the tuna belly. So that is a very rich and delicious piece of sushi. You don't really want to swallow it because this is one of the sushi pieces where you don't want the flavors to end. Next is sea scallop sushi with foie gras. <laughs> Thank you. The sea scallops were mostly sweet, with a combination of slightly salty and briny sea flavor. The foie gras has that rich, decadent taste that tastes buttery, rich, and lends its flavor and umami to the scallop. Next is uni or sea urchin from Hokkaido Bay, topped with tempura or fried shishito peppers salmon ikura or salmon eggs, and finally topped with sea urchin. This sushi piece was one of the best. The sea urchin from Hokkaido has a primarily briny, savory flavor with a very slight sweet aftertaste and a very creamy, buttery texture. The fried shishito peppers in between provides a crispy texture and the fermented salmon roe provides more umami to the already delicious piece of sushi. And shout out to Chef Franklin Chen and Chemistry Room for letting us try the sea urchin from Santa Barbara, California. And you will truly know the difference because the sea urchin from California was way sweeter compared to the sea urchin from Hokkaido. Yeah, you're right. Next is aged wild yellowtail. Topped with Okinawa sea grapes or Okinawa seaweed, yellowtail is known as a very fatty fish, therefore with a richer flavor. This sushi piece is wrapped in premium nori seaweed and topped with Okinawa sea grapes as you see on top. The yellowtail has a very fatty, rich flavor. The premium nori seaweed and the Okinawa sea grapes offers more umami to this piece. The sea grapes have a similar taste to salmon roe, except this sea grapes tastes like the sea. Next is chawan mushi, which is savory Japanese steamed egg custard, mixed with snow crab meat, shimeji mushroom, and topped with caviar. Now this was a delicious egg custard, full of that umami flavor. Melts in your mouth, and the caviar adds more umami to the chawan mushi as well. The snow crab was sweet and blends perfectly to that savory egg custard. Thank you. The shimeji mushroom has a very similar taste to shiitake mushrooms and it lends more umami to this dish. Now if you found that previous course delicious, this is way more delicious, mushroom medley rice with truffle and koji marinated oyster. Now this is truly one of the dishes where you don't want the flavors to end. The rice is very soft and full of that umami savory rich flavor of the mushrooms and oysters infused into the rice. And what's more, the slices of truffle adds more of that concentrated savory umami flavor to the dish. This is one of the courses that you don't want to stop. Because of that savory, rich umami flavor of the rice, the oysters, and the truffle mushroom blends itself into this very delicious course. It's so delicious that you had to eat it in very small portions to prolong the life of this dish. Next is A5 Wagyu beef from Miyazaki with mushu pancake and shisho. 
The A5 Wagyu beef is cut into slices, slightly salted, and toasted slightly over the flame. This mushu pancake and shisho and cucumbers is the usual preparation for Peking duck, but here we will have it in A5 Wagyu beef. This is truly a delicious piece. The beef fat just melts in your mouth. And the rich, buttery, decadent taste of the beef is balanced by the cucumbers and the mushu pancake that is around that beef slice. That is truly a rich beef fat flavor. Next is amadai or tile fish with crispy scales, yuzu, and white asparagus consomme. The tile fish skin is sliced crisscross, toasted, and blowtorched, and mixed with yuzu pepper and white asparagus consomme. Thank you, chef. The result is this sushi with crispy, crunchy scales that are the result of slicing in a crisscross pattern. The fish is tender, slightly creamy and fatty and has the same flavor profile as the sea bream and the yellowtail. And the yuzu and white asparagus consomme provides a tart and balance to the richness of the fish. Next is karasumi or cured mullet roe or fish eggs, angel hair pasta, ikura salmon eggs, and goma dipping soy. The cured mullet roe are the orange slices that you see, and you have to mix the angel hair pasta with the sauce. The angel hair pasta is soft. The sauce is 50% creamy and 50% savory. The slices of cured mullet roe provides the umami savory flavor to contrast that delicate angel hair pasta. The salmon ikura or eggs provide that umami explosion in your mouth. Next is barracuda sushi from Kanagawa. Prepared with a long slice of barracuda topped with watercress, sushi rice, cut into slices, and seasoned with soy sauce. And finally, to provide that crispy skin, it is seared with a blowtorch. This barracuda has almost the same flavor profile as the tilefish and has the same preparation with the skin. This is my first time tasting barracuda and this fish has a mild delicate flavor and possesses that fatty flavor same as a yellowtail. That toasted skin provides that crispy taste and that smoky flavor from the blowtorch. Before we go to our last course, which is the green tea and the dessert, they will ask you if you want to purchase the premium hand rolls, which contain seasonal seafood, and we said yes. So I chose the Dungeness Crab and Santa Barbara Uni, which contains a small amount of sushi rice, lots of Dungeness Crab, Santa Barbara Uni, wrapped in a premium nori hand roll, and seasoned with a little bit of soy sauce. I describe this as a handheld sushi with generous portions of sweet and briny Dungeness crab and a portion of sweet, creamy, and buttery Santa Barbara uni. <laughs> the last course is dessert made up of matcha green tea, foie gras cream puff, and yuzu kukicha. Kukicha just means a blend of stems, stalks, and twigs from specific plants that can be used and mix with green tea and other teas to enhance its flavor and aroma. I expected this cream puff to be sweet, but surprisingly it is savory because of the foie gras full of that umami, rich buttery flavor with a slight hint of sweetness. And it pairs well with our green tea. And shout out to the staff of Chemistry Room, the chefs and the staff for giving us this premium sake or rice wine on the house. This rice wine is so mild, it reminds me of ginger ale or Sprite with just a little hint of alcohol. And that was a great meal and omakase indeed! Thank you for watching this video and I really do hope that you enjoy it and thank you for your continued support and as always, like, comment and subscribe. See you later in the next video guys. Take care.